EI GURP is an advanced distance vector routing protocol. Um, we're going to learn about EI GURP, just the basics here. So uh, it's an advanced distance vector routing protocol. It's uh, Cisco proprietary. Um, it's Cisco created. It's run on Cisco routers. Uh, it was created to replace IGRP or IGRP, which was an earlier Cisco proprietary routing protocol. EIGRP was developed so that you could include subnet masks in the uh, routing updates that go out to other routers so that you could have variable length subnet masks um, and classless interdomain routing. So to do that, EIGRP was developed. And I have that on this bullet point right here. Uh, the differences from other distance vector routing protocols like RIP. Let's cover that. All right, EIGRP uh, uses Reliable Transport Protocol, or RTP, in its EIGRP messages that go out from the router. Uh, it has both a reliable and an unreliable protocol format. Uh, it has a, involves a bunch of different messages. Um, it's network layer independent by not using IP and using RTP instead. Uh, EIGRP can also support IP, IPX, and Apple Talk. Um, Okay, so this is the protocol that talks to other routers. Another thing that uh, is different about EIGRP from uh, RIP is that it uses bounded and partial updates. And what that means is that EIGRP will send information to only the routers that need it, and it's only going to send the information that they need. It's not going to send out its whole routing table like RIP does every 30 seconds. It's not going to do that. All right, e, uh, EIGRP uses a dual or the diffusing update algorithm uh, to guarantee free loops. This is the algorithm that's used by EIGRP, and it uh, guarantees uh, loop-free routes, and it'll also install backup routes. And the guarantee of loop-free routes is um, guaranteed by the complexity of the algorithm, and also because no hold-down timers are used like in RIP. EIGRP establishes adjacencies or neighbor relationships with other routers. It uses uh, hello packets. That's once again the RTP protocol. It establishes these active neighbor relationships and um, with the uh, neighbor routers. Okay, in addition to a routing table, which is the main table uh, for a routing protocol, EIGRP has also a neighbor table, which it has those adjacencies that it's established in there, and a topology table, which has all the routes that it's learned in the network, uh, lesser routes and backup routes. And these have to be uh, uh, loop-free routes. So uh, in this, in, these are often called the neighbor database or topology database. So, and oftentimes when you're learning about EIGRP, it'll say it maintains three databases or three tables. That would be the routing table, the neighbor table, and the topology table, which has all of the routes, even the backup routes. Uh, EIGRP benefits is a little bit similar to this last one. EIGRP has faster convergence due to uh, no hold down timers, which RIP has. What does that mean, uh, convergence? Convergence is when all the routers in your network know about all the routes. So if a route goes down, the, uh, if, uh, if other routers don't know that there's a route down, then the network is said to not be converged. converged. And what you want to do is you want to have all the routers learn very quickly about any downed routes. So that's called convergence, and it's a lot faster with EI group. It uses uh, less bandwidth on the network due to not having periodic updates like uh, RIP sending out its whole routing table every 30 seconds. I put here once again it has bounded and partial updates. We've talked about that. It has backup routes which are called feasible successor routes and they can be installed using dual and the topology table. And um, if, a, uh, if a route, if a best route or a successor route goes down Dual is able to instantly, EI Group is able to instantly uh, install a feasible successor or backup route from the topology table. Uh, and that's uh, pretty nice if it has it. Uh, it can support IP, IPX, and Apple Talk uh, using RTP and uh, PDMs, uh, protocol dependent modules, which can be installed. It supports variable length subnet masks and classless interdomain routing. Once again, subnet masks are included in the protocol, so you can configure. Uh, classless subnet masks. Um, it's also capable of unequal cost load balancing if you have multiple paths to a destination network and they're of unequal cost, meaning different speeds on those links to get there. You can configure EIGRP to send packets out of multiple interfaces even if those are interfaces have different metrics. Um, 
EIGRP defaults. Uh, routers running EIGRP uh, need to have the same process ID number or AS number to form adjacencies with their neighbors. Uh, equal cost load balancing is on by default, but unequal cost is configurable. Okay, and then auto summarization, uh, EIGRP summarizes routes by default. Uh, oftentimes you're going to have to turn this off in EIGRP. So auto summarization I have there. Um, next section, EIGRP messages, RTP. Here's some of the messages that um, go out from an EIGRP router. It sends out hellos every five seconds. Uh, it's an unreliable uh, protocol here. Uh, it has replies. Uh, replies are sent uh, in, reply, in reply to queries. Queries the next type of message it sends out and uh, updates and acts, acknowledgments. And then you can see that some of these are multicast and some of these are unicast. And some of them are reliable and some of them are unreliable. Okay, in the EIGRP messages or RTP protocol, you have the EIGRP header, which has a field called the opcode field, which tells which kind of EIGRP packet, i.e. hello, or reply, or whatever. And these will have a different number. And I didn't list the numbers here, but you can look them up. It also has the AS number or process ID number for the uh, EIGRP process sent in that header. And then in the A EIGRP data area, there are the TLV fields, and um, those have the internal and external routes which are sent over those uh, fields. And also the subnet mask data is sent over the EIGRP data fields. And so that's the EIGRP packet right there. All right, and down here, we'll talk. keep talking here successor and uh, feasible successor routes. Successor route is very simply the best route. That's the route in the routing table that dual computes to find the best route to a destination network. A feasible successor is going to be a backup route and that's going to be in the topology table or topology database. Uh, for To have a feasible successor the route has to meet the feasibility condition and I'm, I got that here. Uh, what is the feasibility condition? That is if the neighbor's route reported distance right to a destination network is less than your router or the local router's feasible distance. So the feasible distance is my destination to a given network and the reported distance is the distance that gets reported to me from other routers. So I learn about a distance from another router, that's a reported distance, and then I calculate a composite metric, and then I have my feasible distance to that network. Okay, and uh, then uh, configuring EIGRP, I've got some basic configuration commands here that you're going to want to know. First of all, how do you turn it on? You need to go into global config mode, and you just type router space EIGRP space, and then a process ID number or AS number, which is in this case here, you can see a one. I put a one there. And then you have to put in your networks. Uh, so the next commands are going to be network, and then a space, and then the uh, network um, address, and then wildcard bits. And wildcard bits are interesting. Wildcard bits are the opposite of a subnet mask. So if my subnet mask was 255.255.255.0, the wildcard bits would be 0.0.0.255. .0 and how do you get that? Well, you just flip the ones and zeros. If you just change all the ones to zeros and all the zeros to ones, you'll get these. So here you can see I've got one for a 24-bit subnet mask. I've got basically a 24-bit uh, wildcard bits. And then here it would be like a slash 30 subnet mask. And this is what the wildcard bits would look like in the slash 30. So then I've added a network, I've added a network, and then here you can also just add a network and not put a uh, wildcard bits or a subnet mask, and then uh, EIGRP will assume it's going to be a classful, um, classful uh, wildcard bits or classful subnet mask. Okay, um, another important command is the no auto summary command, and that will turn off uh, auto summarization by default. I've already said that uh, the no auto summary command will turn off um, summarizing routes for EIGRP. And then the next command I've put here is redistribute static. This will advertise uh, default routes or static routes to other routers in the EIGRP AS um, so autonomous system or all the uh, EIGRP routers have the same process ID. This is useful if you have a default route to like a 000 network with a 000 subnet mask and you want to um, you want to send out that static route, let other EIGRP routers learn about it, then you'd use this redistribute static command.